okay, because that's more error prone. So let me quickly talk about uh, this <clears throat> uh, R script and how to produce a good log file. Uh, first of all, here, uh, the first line in this R script, we have a silenced um, source function. Why it's silenced? Because uh, the first symbol of this line is a pound sign. Pound sign begins a, uh, what is called a comment line. What follows is considered to be uh, text information. And when R hits the pound sign, it knows that uh, what follows the pound sign are simply annotation or comments, and it's not gonna do anything about it. Otherwise, it's gonna spit out an error message. And source is a base function uh, of R. Uh, it executes R script specified uh, in the parentheses. So in this case, uh, well, there is this script file called rlabguy onr and it's saved under this file directory here. And, and then what we need to do is we set echo to be T. That means echo to be true, okay? Uh, it means if uh, we're gonna ex execute this source uh, R script, then we will see output in the interactive console. And max dot uh, d parse dot length equal to 10,000. It specifies the amount of information or output we will see in the log file. But in this case, uh, uh, we're gonna temporarily silence it. And later, I'm gonna invoke this line and execute it. Uh, after the source line, usually what, what we have is uh, the remove command. And we can highlight, uh, this portion and hit run to execute uh, these two lines. Or we don't have to, for example, we can just move cursor to this RM line anywhere here. We hit run, it's gonna run that line. And what it does is that it's gonna remove anything, any uh, object or data array uh, from the global environment. So the memory is empty. You know, um, the next thing, we're gonna do is to set the working directory. So the function is set, WD standing for set working directory. Uh, what it does is it, it's going to set the working directory from which we're gonna read files uh, or uh, to which we're gonna save, you know, let's say graphs or uh, you know, data frame objects uh, we're gonna create. Okay. And it, it simplifies our um, data management step because you know every single time if we we're going to access a data file, if we're going to save a file, uh, we have to specify the file directory, right? Um, by setting working directory, we simply say, well, everything we're going to read is going to be from that working directory, and anything we're going to save. We're going to save it to that working directory. And what we're going to do is simply to specify the file name or some subdirectory folder. Okay. Uh, so that simplifies uh, the workflow. The next step, let me run this line. <clears throat> well, uh, in this case, I intentionally set up an a, um, error there. Well, it, it spits out an error message stating that error in, well, this statement cannot change working directory. In most cases, in most cases, error comes from um, uh, missing uh, some folder or simply we misspecify, uh, you know, some of the uh, file path or file directory. In this case, actually, I don't have A drive. What I have is D drive, you know, miss it could be made, you know, any level of this file path here. And after I made that correction, we can see that this file uh, name here, tab, uh, was turned to red. That means, well, it's not being saved. So I'm gonna use Control S to save this file and then continue, right? So I'm gonna 
uh, move cursor back to this line and hit ROM, it's gonna run, right? And it went through, that means, you know, uh, you know the correction uh, um, was right. Next step is to use the sync file. And uh, that is main thing I'm gonna talk about in this lecture. Sync creates a log file in this case. Well, our lab guy 01.log and where it's gonna be saved, it's gonna be saved under the working directory, so right under our lab. Okay, it's, that's where it's gonna be saved to. So here it shows the utility of having uh, set the working directory because otherwise we have to specify the full uh, file path here, like D uh, colon teach, BSU teach new, CDA labs, R lab, and then this file name. And first of all, it's error prone. Second of all, it, it's kind of tedious. And what if we're gonna save another file to the same working directory? Well, we have to re-specify, uh, repeat this process, right? That's kind of a waste of time and energy here, okay? So uh, here, by set working directory to that working directory, right? We can simply specify the log file name. And here, does not have to be a log file, right? Uh, it, it could be a text file. So you can say txt, but usually I would, Go with log because it is a text file. And with the file extension log, uh, I would know right away that that's a log file. And comma split equal to true. When split argument is set to be true, an output will be sent to the new sync file, the log file, and to the current output stream. Uh, what that means is that, well, for everything that's we're gonna, uh, that we're gonna execute, okay? Output gonna be produced, first of all, uh, in the log file, okay? That we are creating here and to the interactive console here, to the interactive console here. So we can see the output and commands in the interactive console and output, right? Not only output gonna be saved to the log file, not the commands. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, and uh, for the middle part, I'm gonna just click through, right? All the commands reading data file here is to select cases, select variables, right? And skip through a lot of comments, a comment block, and then uh, summarize some basic uh, information about the variables and data file cross tabulation. And another way of cross tabulation, dot uh, plot, dot chart produced in the lower right uh, corner of this window panel, right? And then we can continue here is to create dummy variable. Here's another way to create dummy variable, cross tabulation of the original variable and the recoded dummy variable. And here is to, uh, label this variable, that is to provide more information about the variable, describe that variable and cross tabulation. Here is to create ordered variable uh, from a you know uh, binary variable and cross tabulation. Here is to create a factor variable from a numerical variable, right? Factor variable, cross tabulation again. Um, here is to uh, you know tabulate a single variable uh, from this data file USCDTA dollar sign edu, and here is again some recoding that uh, uh, I'm doing. Here is to create order variable from a numerical variable. Okay, um, cross tabulation. Here is uh, a plot. Okay. A scatter plot, and here we can see, right? You know, uh, we can use zoom to check into uh, this scatter plot of years of education and we coded years of education. You know, here, years of education is a continuous variable. The level of attainment is a, a ordinal level variable recoded from years of education. Uh, then we hit sync, okay? And what it does is that it's going to close off the log file. Remember, we open the log file. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna close the log file. We close it. 
Okay, so from Interactive Council, right here, and uh, this uh, view window, right? We can see the graph, right? The output here. To have a record of what we did, right? We're gonna have a log file. And that's down through using what? The sync, right? The very beginning of the sync that is to open this log file. And then at the end, we close this sync log file. So, so sync parentheses, blanking uh, the parentheses, or well, that means to close off this log file. And let's check that log file. Okay, let's check this log file. So this is our log file. Mm -hmm. What kind of problem we have? Well, we don't have commands at all in this log file. We have output, which is nice, but note that we need to have a complete record of all the procedures like doing natural science, right? Well, data science is part of natural science, right? And um, we gotta have procedures we follow. That is the commands we issue and the output. And we wanna know which output corresponds to which R function. And this log file does not satisfy that requirement. So how are we gonna deal with it, right? Well, the solution is that we're gonna what? Execute this source function. And that's the reason why we had that uh, line kind of uh, written and uh, um, ready for execution. So I copy and paste into the interactive console. And know that there is still a mistake here. This, this is not A drive, this is D drive, okay? And echo equal to true and max D parse dot length equal to 10,000. And that's uh, sufficient for this class, okay? So we execute it and see what happens to the log file. So basically, uh, this line, what this line does is it executes this R script, which contains all the information down below. And we're not supposed to unsilence the source because otherwise we're gonna fall into a loop, okay? This is the first thing, if we take out the, that pound sign here, okay? What it does is it's gonna hit the first line and it's gonna get into that, what, R script. And R script, the first line is source. So it's gonna get into internal iteration that we will never get out. So we have to pound this line, or um, shall I say, silence this line in the R script, but copy beginning from source and execute it. You see that? It just ran through all these lines with one shot, everything here. So from interactive console here, we can see all the commands we issued beginning with this greater sign, right? Greater than sign, okay? The right pointing arrow, right? In interactive console. And also we can see all the graphs produced. How about the log file? Okay, we, we get to the log file. You see any change? Yes, in the log file, we see the commands, the comments, and the output corresponding to their commands. You see that? All the commands and comments now begin with a right pointing arrow or the greater than sign. And all the output, okay, don't have that. And from this log file, you can copy and paste uh, commands or output to the Word document and finish the homework.